Hello everyone and now welcome to game number three in this series between Yumiko and <clears throat> uh, Yumiko and Lin. Lin spawning as the yellow orc over here on the bottom right hand side of Terranus stand. Meanwhile over here on the top left we have Yumiko spawning as the blue human. This is Terranus stand, a 1v1 map with limited creeps as opposed to the Twisted Meadows where there were four spawning locations and a large number of creeps that could drop powerful items. It looked as though Yumiko's original strategy of trying to finish that game early on Twisted Meadows using those early powerful creeps and then pushing with a bunch of militia didn't work out well and as the game went longer and longer it just seemed like Lin was getting all of the right drops and clearing all of the right creep camps getting up to plus 22 damage on his blade master and then getting to level 5 that was far too much damage to overcome and the use of those spirit walkers in game number one and game number two definitely shifted things in favor. We'll see whether or not Yumiko is able to change up his strategy enough to put pressure and put a, a win in his column as we move on into game number three. Anyone who was expecting this to be a best of three series, there are still more games for me to cast. And unfortunately, trying to cast back to back to back exciting games such as these without even a co-caster does put a strain on my already strained voice and I will have to wait a little bit before I get to those particular games. Anyways, let's take a look at what we're looking um, at what's happening now here. Blade Master gonna go ahead and get trained up and we'll see whether he heads to the south or to the north. He could try and clear and um, this creep camp here. It is just a 1-1-1 creep camp, but that middle apprentice does drop a very, very useful item um, as well. Meanwhile, the Blade Master is gonna be going after the oh, Renegade Wizard here. Yeah. Renegade Wizard taking a bit of extra damage and then maybe pulled back here in just a moment. Our Mage using that lightning shield to great effect, maximizing its damage. Oh, it needs to make sure it doesn't accidentally kill anything with that lightning shield, though. There's one, there's two, or one more, we'll do it, and then another one there. So he's gonna pick up the remaining items, gets to level three, gets the gauntlets of ogre strength plus three, picks up the tome of intelligence, and the gloves of haste. We'll see if the Blade Master lucked out on items. Mantle of Intelligence, not that useful. And since it looks like he sold the other item, it looks like he did not luck out nearly as well. Back off to the north. Archmage going to go ahead and clear out the 311 creep camp here. Water Elemental up in that front line position, absorbing all of that damage, but it has a timed life, anyways. Dropping another Mantle of Intelligence plus three. Going to be good for that Archmage as he does like to have a bit more mana and a little bit more damage to go with it. Did the Grunt get the shot? I'm not sure. Oh, well, why am I clicking the Grunt? I should click the Archmage. Archmage looks like he got the kill there. Meanwhile, Blade Master going after the Brigand. Um, this is a, a little bit of a surprise. There's a bit of poison in here as well. The Blade Master is going to um, easily finish this off. He's going to probably pick up the item and then, well, gets a Claws of Attack plus six. Uh, he might healing salve and wind walk away. There he goes to, um, well, get a little bit more hit points and feel a little bit better about himself. Confidence boosters, right? Confidence boosters. And that's what those claws of attack plus six are on a blade master. They feel like, well, I don't know what they feel like. forces are under attack. Uh, even, even my dad jokes are getting bad. All right. Anyways, if, if there was such thing as a good dad joke. Anyways, Archmage now coming back around, clearing up this 3-1-1 creep camp very easily, picking up um, a Dust of Appearance. No, what item was was that? Was it another Gauntlet of Ogre Strength plus 3? So now already up to plus 6, uh, uh, plus six Strength, up to 625 hit points. Um, with that much additional strength, he is actually normally only ha supposed to have, what, 475 hit points. That extra 150 hit points really benefiting right him right there as the remainder of this 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one creep camp um, gets cleared out. So that's a 4-1-1-1-1 one, 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 one creep camp normally. No wonder it is so easy to take out um, throughout this game. All right, my next 3-2-2 um, two, two, two creep camp left. Murloc, Nightcrawler going to spread some poison. 
as we are taking finished taking the tier two, adding in a watchtower. So Lin adjusting to what exactly um, Yumiko has been doing in the previous games. It doesn't um, and Yumiko also adjusting his strategy as well, going for a Mountain King over that Beast Master. Now. As I've said in, in the previous games, choosing your heroes is a long time commitment. It's not, it, it is a definite investment and you only get three heroes. So by cha choosing your three particular heroes, you know uh, what is going to be happening pretty early. All right, peons um, trying to, well, trying to do a little bit of extra damage right there. Is the another water elemental going to be dropped and finish off this one? Oh, a hex quickly comes in. Is it going to finish off this right here? No, it is going to get canceled. It gets taken out. Shadow Hunter doesn't get experience scroll of town portal and oh this is interesting it, it's it is making his opponent believe that he is trying to go for mass um excuse uh, mass summons by stopping the spirit lodge he may make his opponent believe that he needs to get those spirit walkers and train even more of them early on to deal with mass summons instead it is going to be a mountain king doing a bit of a push with a triple ivory towers and we'll see whether or not that storm bolt will be effective enough now the shadow hunter as you remember went hex first so it is not going to have the healing wave that is so powerful um, for a little while longer. Nope, I take it back. Tome of Experience drops and a lucky break once again for Lin getting to level two on that Shadow Hunter. B but we are going to be doing a strong push here. Mountain King now coming across. Do we have Arcane Sentry? I do not believe so. We are just getting sources, sorceresses right now. Ivory Tower is coming into play. There's one, two, three. Ivory Tower upgrading our Tyree. Upgrading ivory tower upgrading as well as the water elementals are going to be getting in position All right time currently on the side of Yumiko as Yumiko Needs or wants to get these towers up Kodo beast joining in and there we are gonna be having some attacks Are they gonna be doing auto repair peons joining in as well mountain king storm bolting onto a poor grunt and the grunt is gonna get taken out There goes one our arcane towers or these towers are just um, getting repaired they should just be auto repair these peasants should be on auto repair um easily able to switch targets when necessary there you go um kodo beast coming across here it looks as though that shadow hunt or that uh, troll head hunter will be able to back off with the footman trying to catch up again grunts now coming in as well sorceresses do have slow arcane towers now out Arcane Tower should be going after the Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter losing a lot of mana, down to 86 mana as the fighting now underway. Blade Master not going to be able to get away easily as there is Dust of Appearance on him. He will be taking additional damage. Spirit Link once again being cast more as we have double Arcane Towers. Double Arcane Tower is going to be that much more difficult as the Spirit Walkers could be losing a lot of mana as well. All right, more repairs underway. The Peons are trying to engage. Speed Scroll being used, and it looks as though, yes, one Arcane Tower will get taken out, but there are two Peasants um, choosing to engage as opposed to trying to repair those towers. I still don't understand Yumiko's particular strategy with these Peasants. As we now see um, the engagement happening back down over here, this is not looking good at all. We see a new arcane tower being constructed or a new uh, scout tower being constructed down across here. We see the Archmage currently with Potion of Healing as the Mountain King could try and engage once again. All right, a bit of slow cast onto the uh, poor, poor Grunt here. Are we going to see... Oh, this dispelling that clarity potion the grunt getting back up to um, half life again mountain king not using the storm bolt since he does not have it just quite yet blade master still trying to head back home as we see a level three level one battling against a level three level two almost at level three as the grunt gets taken down shadow hunter gets the level three level two healing wave is going to be that much more effective once again as the ivory tower needs to be upgraded not quite sure what yumiko's long-term strategy was with these peasants but that tower attempt was was weak at best the the peasants should have been moving back. They should not have been engaging. They should not have been attacking. Constantly repairing is really what you want to be doing. As you see, um, once again, a Kodo beast being brought over. No additional uh, militia being brought over. Priests being brought over instead. 
as we are now going to adept training and uh, for both those sorceresses and those priests okay arcane tower removing some mana on that blade master could be going after the shadow hunter as well shadow hunter now being forced to back off but it looks as though this tower attempt has fallen flat once more lin stopping stopping this tower attempt now at level three level three going up against a level three archmage and a level one mountain king mount this is just not looking good at all as the blade master not following it up and the mountain king will be able to get to level two double gauntlets of strength um increasing the experience or hit points up to 850 and increasing the damage slightly picking up the tome of agility mount what is the mountain king really hoping to do as we now see him clearing out the other side other creep camp once more there goes one a bash coming across there there goes another picks up another tome and well is he gonna finish this last guy only one sorceress shot should do it So far, Lin has been responding absolutely perfectly against whatever Yumiko has been attempting. We do see Spellbreakers now joining in on the fight as well as the Blade Master looking for where exactly the Archmage of Yumiko is. Now, the longer this uh, fight, the longer he takes to just try and find his opponent as opposed to clearing out creep camps, the better it is going to be for Yumiko. But this creep camp here, one of the more difficult creep camps, has just now been cleared out. We also see a large number of sorceresses and priests. This is a very heavy caster army that is rather strong, um, rather weak against the raiders, since the raiders do deal siege damage while having medium damage themselves, or medium armor themselves. That medium armor it pretty much is reduced damage from those casters. The only thing that really takes bonus damage are going to be those spirit walkers in ethereal form. All right. Uh, expansion was quickly, quickly canceled right there. Mountain King. Is it going to find oh find a rather open, open creep camp here as the Mountain King wants to finish this all off? If the Mountain King can get up to at least 270 mana, um, it will be in a much better spot to use that potion of greater mana, picking up a potion of lesser invulnerability. Archmage now seen at level four, potion uh, replenishment potion as well. Mountain King is gonna be looking strong. Um, Blade Master is pretty very much nearby. Mountain King not gonna get to level three though, gonna be just a bit shy as we see a quick hex go down there. All right, Stormbolt onto the Blade Master, but a potion of invulnerability dodges it. Archmage may be forced to buy a scroll of town portal if things get um, a little bit complicated and well disenchant and the water elemental gets taken down giving more experience once again all right archmage heading back off to the north here with that mountain king level two brilliance aura all of these casters going to be that much better at or that much more ready for the upcoming fight 285 mana for that mountain king ready to go is he going to pick up a circuit of nobility that actually might be a good investment just for the extra mana at this point off of the excuse me off of the potion of greater mana and his overall maximum mana 285 well if he's able to get eight storm bolts off in a fight that is a lot of stun and a lot of picked off units as well pretty much all of those creep camps have been cleared out Archmage and Mountain King, both of them have some ivory towers. Water Elemental now being brought down to the south. Once again, Spellbreakers being added. Population count is looking at 59 for Yumiko compared to 49 for Lin, as Lin looks to set up an expansion once more. Amount of gold in the bank, and what, 400? And that expansion is about another 400 gold as well. That's really where a lot of um, the difference is so far. And it doesn't it it's not really explained why yumiko has such a, a larger larger army right now and um, spirit walkers are seen at adept training it looks as it looks as those spirit or forest troll berserkers were used in here as the blade master oh goblin zeppelin uh, pushed back out but the blade master is inside of the base this is this could potentially be a problem but instead of having it become a problem gonna use this as an opportunity as the blade master does not have an easy way in and out of this base blade master going after some of these units here is he going to be able to focus this down and um, the well, peasants are now just going massively into the gold mine as scout tower or watchtower now taken down orc burrows getting taken down blade master 
trying to do a little bit of cute play, not realizing how bad of a spot he is in. All right, Orc Burrows are absolutely getting destroyed. Peons are going to have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide if all of these pe or if all of these Orc Burrows are lost. All right, peasant after peasant is now being lost as we now are trying to uh, take down the Town Hall. Town Hall of Yumiko down to 218 hit points. No scroll of Town Portal possible I, on either side. Meanwhile, there are Arcane Towers back across here as the peasants or the peons are trying to get away. Peons, however, do not look like they're going to be able to get away at all as there goes another one. And oh, wow, 26 hit points. It gets away. Water Elemental off over here. This is turning into a massive base race. But this one peon getting away and being lifted off is going to be huge. This peon also running away as well. Do we have any more peasants for Yumiko? Yumiko has the larger army still, but does it even matter? Trying to run back home. 52 over 48 nothing left really to do as we see the the water elemental gonna perhaps try and take down the zeppelin no um, um you can see that the you, uh, the units are now trying to or the zeppelin is trying to get away mountain king now heading back off to the north what you see is going to be what you get in terms of army but the mountain king if he's able to get off a storm bolt once or twice and then just pick off units that is going to be a huge huge deal no one mining anything right now and it, we are going to be revealed here in just a moment. Can you hire a second Goblin Zeppelin? That is the question. Are you going to be able to pick up all of your units? The peons are hiding in the backfield here. Uh, the town hall is still up, um, but you're not going to be able to hire anything at all. Spellbreaker is going to be ready to go. Stormbolt onto the Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter is going to be in serious trouble. Scroll of healing needs to be used. No, um, a healing wave, disenchant, trying to get away. Mountain King gets hexed, picked up by the goblin oh dropped at the last moment as the days as the hex goes through and the scroll of healing being used as well mountain king knows after the shadow hunter is down that's pretty much going to be everything right there mountain king now bashing his way out of there another healing wave being used mountain king still has plenty of mana though as the shadow hunter gets storm bolted for the third time mountain king still has plenty of mana level four now on the mountain king going after the remainder of the units that was a very heavy investment lost a lot to take out that hero but no more heals will be available. Mountain King, any more Storm Bolts coming across? Not quite sure. All the casters are trying to hide in the back. Storm Bolt onto the Blade Master. Blade Master could be in trouble. Mountain King trying to get in front. Mountain King has a potion of greater mana. Storm Bolt could be coming in. Where is it? Where is it? Storm Bolt now going across bolting back down to 151 hit points mountain king has plenty of mana with that potion of greater mana is he gonna get it taken down blade master falls unable to buy from the shop and now with no heroes the archmage and the mountain king should be enough to finish off the remainder of the units here units are now trying to run and hide spellbreaker gonna get slowly digested mountain king gonna finish off these units stormbolt another unit if you can in order to just save your buildings at this point um, any every prevented hit could be the difference between victory and defeat as the raiders are still trying to run away there goes another grunt there goes the kodo beast and there is the game yumiko takes game number three gets a w in the win column with a base race and focusing of heroes even though he scored less in every single category thanks for watching thanks for listening Hope you guys enjoyed it.